Well, I guess it's official. Now I'm an influencer. Recently, BenQ reached out and asked if they could send me something. You know, maybe this is indicative of the sort of year that we've had and just emerged from, but immediately I thought of Nigerian shares, Herbalife franchises, antiviral software, or Bitcoin. I mean, who sends a middle-aged sub-10K booktuber anything? Well, it turns out a Taiwanese multinational that's all about bringing enjoyment and quality to life, which quite frankly, is some next-level English acronyming right there, I gotta say. Name aside, BenQ is the undisputed leader in gaming monitors, but that's not exactly what they sent me. Instead, they sent along the BenQ e-reading lamp. And I gotta say, the thing is a beaut, but still, I'm a little suspicious of anyone sending a channel my size anything. So I do some digging online. The BenQ. 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 E-reading. E-reading. E-reading lamp. E-reading. Reading. E-reading. Lamp. Lamp. This time it's bigger, better, smart, granddaddy. I'm not going to hear tell you it's magic. This super is cool looking. Just fancy. Awesome. This is the best reading light I've ever had. Desk lamp. No, that's just a glimpse. From 9 to 90,000 subscribers, the reviewers run the gamut from channels that are lifestyle vloggers, hobbyists, tech reviewers, as well as a handful of booktubers. What I find suspicious is one or two of the reviewers make no mention of the fact that they were sent the light, which to me is a little sus, but you do you. Now, I like this approach from BenQ, not the least of which is because I get a lamp out of the deal, but obviously BenQ has a lot of confidence in the quality of their light. The reviews online are unanimously positive. And frankly, for their efforts, they own the keywords e-reading lamp. So not bad. So what about me? What is my story when it comes to this lamp? What angle am I taking that hasn't been explored already? For many of us, working from home during the quarantine has been a real eye-opener. We've been very lucky. The work from home transition from the office has been relatively seamless, and the entire team has been very productive. Now, I know in the early days there was a lot of intentionality in being productive, to be seen by the higher-ups as consistently delivering just in case they might be considering some layoffs to help weather the COVID downturn. That didn't happen. We all fell into a new rhythm and accepted that this is our new normal. I've been super lucky, obviously, and been flourishing relatively well working from home, but I've done a lot to make my work environment livable. I mean, at this point in the quarantine, you need to be treating your home office like a home office. I still curl up and die a little bit every time I jump on a Zoom call and I see a coworker working from the kitchen table. Now, don't at me, I know not everyone has the luxury of being able to eke out a small space for themselves for a home office, or if you have kids at home, I get it, sometimes you need to work from a centralized location so you can keep an eye on the little ones as well. But man, long ago, I ran into the office, stole the office chair, got the standing desk and brought it home to make this space more workable. I'm an old guy. If I had been working at the dining room table since the beginning of lockdown, I would be a bent and broken man. Lots of coworkers snuck into the office, pulled out standing desks, office chairs, monitor stands, anything to make their work from home offices that much better. The thing is, most people have never considered their lighting situation. Not bad, right? I mean, we're just gonna make do with whatever we have on hand. Now, if you're of a certain age, I mean old, chances are pretty good that you've actually spent a lot of time working under fluorescent lights. So you know what kind of impact good or bad lighting can have on you. When we moved into our new office, we spent a small fortune on updating all the lights inside to LED, and it has made a massive difference. We're all working from home now, and if you're like me, you know how hard the winter months can be. It is dark when I start work, it is dark when I finish work, and it's pretty well gray in between. And that can really get to you over time. I mean, I think I'm part plant. My photosynthetic cells start to shrivel up and die around this time of year. And the stuff just keeps adding up. We're in our second lockdown. There's the inevitable post-holiday spike, not to mention the seasonal effective order that just hits me like a ton of brick come February. I need to be ready. So here comes the segue. At home, I've been benefiting from the BenQ e-reading lamp. Here it is in my home office setup. Yes, I know it's a little bit ridiculous, but to be fair, this is an amalgamation of my home and office PCs. And it frankly fits the aesthetic. This thing is the iMac of lamps. It's a beaut to look at. The smile shape provides wider diffuse lighting coverage up to 150% more than conventional lights. And the light is built to last well over 50,000 hours or over 15 years of use. 
It reduces screen glare and eye fatigue, so overall not bad. So you turn the light on and off with just a touch of the ring. There's also a dial up top that allows you to adjust the lighting temperature as well as its intensity. And if you're feeling lazy, you just touch and hold the ring. And what the eye care technology does is gauges the ambient light in the room and adjusts accordingly. There's two settings for that. There's one for working with the monitor and one for reading. So all in all, pretty slick. Now I'm showing the lamp on my desk, but I've had the BenQ ED reading lamp for well over a month now, and I've also been using it as a bedside lamp. And I have to admit, I think I might even like it more that way. It provides a nice, wide, diffuse light that's perfect for reading. And like I said, you can adjust the temperature controls from 2700 Kelvin up to 5000 Kelvin. So I tend for reading at night to a warmer 2700 Kelvin area. Now for comparison, candlelight is about 1800 Kelvin. Now this just provides a nice warm, cozy light, perfect for nighttime reading. Now here in the office, I tend to crank it back up towards the blue light spectrum, closer to 5000. And that means that the colors on my screen render correctly. Anyway, at the office, we have studio lights that have temperature controls, but I've never had that ability at home. And I gotta say, it's pretty darn nice. So I guess I joined the online masses with my unequivocal praise for the lamp. Although I will have to say after watching a ton of different videos online, I insist that you call it an LED e-reading lamp, much like the GIF GIF debate where both are considered acceptable. You are frankly horribly wrong if you referred to this as a lead lamp. Fix yourself. Now, I know things have been a little spotty here at Shape Optimist, but we're all going through it. Anyway, I hope you're staying safe and mindfully trying to navigate the holiday season this year and trying to consider what celebration looks like in the midst of a pandemic while acknowledging that New Year's Eve is also just right around the corner. Happy holidays regardless. Here's to 2021. Let the old year burn. We'll talk to you soon.